Well, welcome to the Genesee District Library Showcase. I'm Eileen Button, and I'm a community columnist for the Flint Journal. And I'm thrilled to be here today with Elizabeth Berg. Elizabeth Berg is a New York Times bestselling author of 21 books, including titles such as The Pull of the Moon, The Day I Ate Whatever I Wanted, and her 2009 release, Home Safe. So we are so happy that you're here. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad to be here. You know, when I look at your books and I look at um, the number of things that you write, for the most part you write fiction, but you also write nonfiction. Escaping into the open, the art of writing true, you write for uh, newspapers and even magazines still. Mm -hmm. Is fiction your preferred genre? It is at this point, and I never thought I'd write fiction, interestingly mm -hmm. enough. I began writing for magazines, and I wrote for magazines for 10 years, mm -hmm. and the personal essay form is one with which I'm really comfortable. Mm -hmm. I love to do essays, and, and that's why I still do them sometimes. Yeah. But um, now it seems that almost everything in my life gets funneled somehow or another into fiction. Okay, so with that, at what point when you're writing fiction do you transfer in from I'm writing about uh, myself in a nonfiction way to oh no, now I'm totally writing about this nonfiction character who's become very real to me? Yeah, it's, it's a very different form and um, I, I guess an easy way to make a distinction is to say that writing nonfiction is like writing when you're awake and writing fiction is like writing when you're dreaming. Oh. It's, it really feels that way. And for me, um, as a writer who doesn't plot mm -hmm. and who doesn't know from day to day or even moment to moment what's going yeah. to happen next, what's most important is that there be an element of trust. I have okay. to trust the process, my own process. Every writer works differently and I think for people who want to be writers, something fundamental to understand is that you have to honor your own process or you're mm -hmm. going to be continually frustrated. So I take a leap every day when I write. I don't know what's going to happen. I go down there and I try to disconnect from up here and yeah. deal with what's in there, in the, in the, in the heart and soul. And, and it needs to be a mystery for me. It needs to just tell me the story rather than the other way around. The book tells me what to do. I don't tell the book what to do. I mean, that's amazing, though, that you would not plot. That every day was, you know, like, as you said, a leap of faith. Yeah. I mean, is that ever scary? Like, what if I, what if I leap and today I don't land? It's, it's, it's not really scary. I would say that it's more difficult in the beginning of writing a book to kind of find my sea legs, if you mm -hmm. will. Mm -hmm. um, if you will. <laughs> uh, it, it takes a little while to, to know where, where I am emotionally, mm -hmm. spiritually. Mm -hmm. And then um, it really does take over. Mm -hmm. I used to hear authors talk about how their characters took over, and I would think, yeah, yeah right. Mm -hmm. But they do. They, they are their own little beings and, and dialogue uh, creates itself. I don't say to myself, let's see, she just said this, so I wonder what he will say in response. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not like that at all. It's like I'm overhearing a conversation and, and taking dictation, going as quickly as I can. But does it ever happen beforehand, be, before you can even get to the page, and then you have to remember oh, what was already said? Yeah, sometimes um, when I'm right before I fall asleep or right after I wake up. Those right. seem to be very fertile times for me. Right. So I'll think of something. Um, I can remember once I was writing um, uh, The Handmaid and the Carpenter mm -hmm. and an entire scene played out in my head like a movie. Mm -hmm. I saw everything. I heard all the dialogue and I thought, Oh, I'm so tired. I don't want to get up. I don't want to get up. I'll remember all this tomorrow. And I knew I wouldn't. I knew I wouldn't. So I went in my study and I turned on my computer and mm -hmm. said, come on, come on, turn on and wrote it. Mm -hmm. um, other times when that sort of thing happens, it's not always a complete scene like that. It will be an idea or a mm -hmm. phrase. And then I'll write it down and put it beside the bed and hope that I remember what that was in the morning. And I usually And that do. you can actually read your own handwriting, right? Usually, yes, usually. 